Hello there, and welcome back to my painting channel. On this painting uh, video, I wanted to show you something a little bit uh, more unique than normal. So for this one, I'm going to try and paint something that is quite a bit of a shock, really, because this is a little squirrel miniature that I was given to do as a commission. But this little miniature is actually only um, four pounds. It actually only cost four pounds for the miniature. So a friend of mine has asked me to, to paint this for his Blood Bowl uh, tournament that he's got coming up. So I want to kind of show you the video of me going through and painting this little miniature and turning it into something that is hopefully quite um, uh, table ready and, and, and quite good by the end. Um, so I just wanted to see if you guys wanted to join and tag along and see how I paint uh, paint through this little miniature. It's very unique. It's actually surprisingly good detail and a surprisingly uh, uh, well crafted miniature, especially considering the price. Um, and it's made by a company called We Print Miniatures, which if you're on Instagram, you can follow those guys on Instagram. They also have a website as well, and they seem to do a lot of mystery boxes. So they tend to do mystery boxes of like three miniatures for £10 and things like that. And after painting this miniature, I'll be honest with you, I'm really, really, really looking forward to buying into one of the miniatures, uh, one, one of the random miniature boxes, just so that I can do something completely different. Because I always like to do little palette cleansers in between some of the bigger jobs that I'm doing and in between some of the bigger sort of um, uh, sort of like paintings that I'm doing. So currently at the moment I'm between two different Blood Bowl teams so I'm currently doing the Snotlins and I've got the Lizard Men uh, on the way as well. So while I'm doing those it's nice to paint these little miniatures like this and just do something very very different. So to make things a little bit different I've also started by doing the eyes first. Now it's very very rare that I do the eyes especially on miniatures this small because you don't tend to see them when they're on the tabletop. And from there then I'm just using a Vallejo Orange Brown, which is the same base colour that I used on my short video about painting orange beards. An orange brown from Vallejo is a really, really nice base colour. Orange brown is exactly what it says. It's a brown colour that has a little bit of an orange tint to it. Now it's not too orange that you go, wow, that's really orange, and it's not too brown, it's not dark, which makes it quite a good base colour because you can build that colour back up quite easily. And it also means that it's very easy to use um, shades like Agrax or your soft tone and things like that on there. So once I painted the fur, I'm just making the helmet uh, silver because that was one of the um, that was one of the requirements really for this commission was that my friend wanted him to have bright orange fur and a silver helmet. That was pretty much all he asked. Oh, and he asked for blood. He wanted blood. Being Blood Bowl, he wanted blood. So uh, yeah, once I had done the, uh, the, the the helmet then and made that sort of a, a nice silver colour, um, I then painted the uh, the top part of the acorn with a Vallejo Earth. And what I've done is I've, I've used two different browns, so a part for the top and a part for the bottom. And I've used two different browns just so that it does have a slight separation, so that the colour isn't just too flat and it's one toned and things like that. Um, so I'm using a Vallejo Earth for the top part and then for the bottom part I'm using a Vallejo Beastie Brown and they look quite similar to begin with but they do dry slightly different because when your paints dry they always paint uh, when your paints dry they always dry a little bit darker than when you apply them so when you apply your paints they always do look that little bit brighter. Now, my aim for this paint job was to make it nice and simple, nice and easy but also stick to the requirements of the commission, stick to the requirements of what, what my friend was asking for, uh, but also try to capture a little bit more of the character, because this is quite a small miniature, but it does have quite a lot of character, it's got quite nice puffy cheeks, the teeth, the eyes, um, you know, it's got quite a little bit to it. Um, so just painting the gloves then, and um, for the gloves, I just went for uh, my, my go-to colour for dark tones, which is the, uh, the Vallejo German Grey. And I haven't put the colours across the bottom in this video, because this is more just sort of uh, a little bit of a, a showcase and a talk through me painting this, you know. This isn't a, a strict painting video as such, because this model isn't a normal sort of model. It's not like the Games Workshop model. It's not me giving you sort of a... a a side-by-side -side tutorial but it's something that you could follow if you wanted to to, to uh, go along with sort of like my color schemes 
Um, so yeah, with the horn and the teeth then, once I painted the gloves, I was just using a nice bright colour. So for this one I was using a, a sort of creamy white. So with the Vallejo range that's like a bone white, um, but there are other ranges and there are other colours that you can use. But the whole idea behind this was just again so that you've got something that stands out because when you compare that orange brown tone, the brown of the, the, the acorn that he's carrying um, versus the white of the teeth and the claws, those are parts that will draw your eye into the miniature, they should draw you in to see sort of how it looks and, and sort of um, uh, make it a little bit more interesting and give it a little bit more, de uh, more depth, they should pop on that miniature. And of course to make him extra super 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 duper cute we had to give him a nice little bright pink nose. So I'm using squid pink for that from Vallejo. Squid pink is one of my favourite colours as well. Um, so my base I've put um, a few layers of one mil uh, cork. I couldn't even think of the word then, sorry. Uh, cork, I found in my local shop, in my local craft store, that they've got a roll of adhesive cork. And it's only one mil thick, so because of that, what I'm doing is I make it multiple layers. So I'm putting like three or four layers at a time. Um, and I'm, in, I'm really enjoying sort of like building different kinds of um, bases out of the cork. And I might make a video on all the different kinds of bases that I've made. Again, I've also made a video previously on using these um, little uh, plastic trees and these little plastic bits. Um, so they're kind of like aquarium plants. Um, and I'm painting these with a military green, just a nice dark green. You know, you could use any kind of dark green if you want. Um, and that's just to create a little bit more character to the base. So I've made like a rocky base, then I've put a few plants on there. I've put the bone on there as well, and I've also put a skull. And the reason being is because with this, when I saw the squirrel and I put it onto the, um, and I put it onto the, uh, the cork base, one of the first things that came to mind, one of the um, the inspirations that I had was the um, the beast, the little rabbit from the Monty Python film. So the beast from the caves of Kyle Bernard. Um The whole idea was to try to kind of create something that has that same kind of cool little cutesy yet nasty effect all rolled into one. So I wanted him to be like, oh he's really lovely. But then at the same time when you see how many bones and how much blood is around, you kind of think, He's really lovely, I really want to give him a hug, but at the same time, he's going to mold my face. So that was the idea behind that, was just to create something that's really cutesy, really nice, but at the same time gives it a little bit more of a blood bowl sort of feel. Excellent, that's what we wanted. So from there, I'm covering the whole miniature and the base included, all in one straight wash, because that makes it a little bit easier. Um, and for this wash, I'm using a Army Painter Strong Tone. So that's a brown colour, um, it's a little bit darker than your soft tone, so this is a little bit more like an Agrax Earth shade if you're a Citadel user. And from there then it's just about building the colours back up. So I'm going back to the original colour, the orange brown, and just using a very very detailed brush as you can see I'm just trying to create the illusion of little whiskers and depth in the fur around his face and things like that. And we're just going to build that colour back up by just touching the tips of the fur and creating our own little straight line so that we can create the fur as we go. Um, and again, what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to build that colour up. So I'm going to do this and then I'm going to add a highlight to it and things like that. Um, so it's just all about adding to the, uh, the vibrance of the miniature to create that sort of cutesy feel, that kind of cute. Um, and a luscious orange colour because don't forget as I said one of my prerequisites for doing the miniature was that they wanted a silver helmet, blood and a nice orange colour. So this, this star player is for a friend who's going to be playing in a tournament, a Blood Bowl tournament and he wanted to use a acorn uh, model but he needed one in a very short space of time. So he took to eBay and he found this company, this We Print Miniatures, and he found this company and he found this little £4 miniature and he thought, ah, do you know, for £4 I'll give it a go because it's only a quick little local Blood Bowl tournament, it's not a big thing, it's not an official tournament, don't need to be an official miniature or anything like that. So he picked this up on the off chance for £4 and I have to say for £4 I'm very impressed, you know, it's something that... Yes, you can see some little mould lines and you can see some little bits, but generally as a whole, the miniature is actually really good and it's a really, really fun miniature to paint. If you wanted something in between as a, a palette cleanser or just something to do for a little bit of fun, 
I can't recommend something like this enough because this is just so cost effective. Even if it's just to pick something up to learn some, some new techniques on or to try something completely different, uh, you know, at £4 that makes it worthwhile. So lately I've been toying about and playing about with a lot of inks and I've been inking a lot of my miniatures so that I build that vibrancy. So instead of using a highlight colour, what I'm doing is I'm creating a highlight colour out of the base colour but with an ink added to it so that that creates the vibrancy but it also keeps the same sort of tone and consistency with the base colour. And that's exactly the same thing here. So what I've done is I'm using that orange, uh, orange brown but I've added in a Winsor & Newton um, titanium white and I've just put one, uh, one uh, pipette, so just one little dropper of white into that orange brown and by doing that then I'm creating a single step up on the highlight. Um, the good thing with inks is inks tend to be a little bit more, um, uh, like they, they tend to be a lot thinner. So when you paint in with an ink, you can be a little bit more um, layer based. So you can create one layer and as you wait for that to dry, you'll find then that it dries down a lot thinner than your original plan. So you can go back over and create sort of multiple layers, but just catching the more extreme edges and it will build a progression and a natural sort of smoothening. And for that, I've made a video about uh, creating sort of magical sword blends. And that's exactly the same thing. You're just using a uh, thin down coat of paint to blend that color back through. And pretty much that's all I've done. So when you look at the tail and things like that, and you look at the colors, I've used the base color with a little bit of that white ink. And I've just built that color up until we've got a dark where the shade has hit. Obviously the mid-tone where the base color is, and then the highlight as well. So after doing that, I went back and I did the exact same thing on the acorn itself. So I went back to that Vallejo Earth color on the top part. I've got a nice thin coat and I'm just using very, very thin layer to build that color back up. And then by creating more color on that edge, it creates a little bit more vibrancy just around the curve. And as you see with the bottom half then on this beastie brown, doing the same thing, but I'm trying to leave streaks in it so it creates a little bit more of um, uh, like a texture or a tone to that um, to that base color then. So what you're getting is a little bit more, um, it, it kind of, like I said earlier, draws your eye into the miniature because there's more to see than just one flat color. Um, and the more that you leave or the more you, you, you paint towards the edge, the brighter and more vibrant the edge will become so you get that smooth transition uh, but without needing or rather but but by using a brush rather than an airbrush obviously an airbrush will do it a lot lot quicker for you but as someone that hasn't used an airbrush or has no experience i can't really sort of talk you through that and then i'm just dry brushing a little bit of the base so i'm just dry brushing this now back up a lighter gray so i've used a really dark gray for the base you know the normal sort of like german gray that i tend to use a lot of and then i'm just honing that back up a little bit then with a mid-tone gray so this one is a blue gray blue gray pale um, and that's just to create a little bit um, more depth in terms of the rocks and stuff that's on top of that base and I'm just going to paint the bones back in as well. So this is going on the bone and on the skull. So we're going back and just painting the uh, the colours back in. So this is the same colour that I used on the teeth and the horn on the uh, squirrel's helmet. Um, and once it's done, sort of, it, it gets to this sort of stage. What you'll notice is I've just painted a little bit of the leaves in. So um, again, if you go back to one of my other videos you can see that the, the video there it will talk you through how to do the leaves it's nice and easy you can see that I've added the uh, the blood under the helmet that's all I've done is stipple that with a very light sort of flat brush and just to create a little bit more depth into the base the only other thing I've done is I've used a small batch of typhus corrosion in parts so that the rocks then also look dirty and muddy and things like that so that again it's not just one flat color and it creates more to look at all in all for four pound this is a great little miniature it's been really fun to paint it was something cool to try new techniques and, and to try building those blends and create that little bit of an orange color 
If it's something that you guys think would be a cool painting, or something that you guys think you would like to try out for £4, I highly recommend. As always, thank you very much for watching my videos. I know this one was a little bit different, and maybe a little bit long-winded, but thank you so much for watching and tuning in.